I got a big family with six sisters and four brothers. And my mother's on drugs. My father passed away. Um, I got raped during high school, my 12th grade year, so I just stopped going. I guess I was the black sheep, but my mother have a lot of kids, a lot. Like, I don't know how many, I can't even count right now. And my father was a drug addict, so it was, I guess it was hard for her to take care of all of us. And I just went on my own. It's crazy. Cause like I can name like a good seven, eight boys I done grew up with that's dead now. Like it's hard out here. It's hard, very hard. They're all poor. You know, they're used to feeling marginalized, rejected, depressed, hopeless, like nobody respects them, nobody cares about them, and there's no hope for them. They walk into Youth Build and what we want them to feel right away is respect. You're important here. All right, this exercise, we're gonna begin to test our trust in each other. All right, so I need all of my ones. You should have a blindfold in your hand. The first Youth Build program was started in 1978 in East Harlem. We had 300 abandoned buildings in East Harlem where I lived. We had hundreds, maybe thousands, of young people standing on the corners with nothing to do, and lots of homeless people. So I looked at that and said, there's something wrong with this picture. Someone should hire these young people to rebuild these buildings and create housing for the homeless people. Right. So you have all of these young people who are hopeless. They're not going to do anything different. They are who they are. Uh, they'll end up in prison, drug addicts, or dead. To be able to turn that around is a powerful thing. I met Robert 13 years ago when he was in his first year in youth build. And you know he is a youth build graduate. He's the first youth build graduate to be the executive director of a big youth build program like Newark. The youth build experience prepared me to be a leader in my community. Uh, many young people today don't even realize that that is possible for them. The mental toughness is like a way of almost shaking them out of their despair. It's like, okay, guys, to succeed, you're gonna have to snap out of it. You're gonna have to take charge of your life. Down. Up. So you back out. Down. Oh. One. Oh. Ma, what you doing? Together. When we first started, we had to go through this program. Like, we had to do exercise and run around the building. <laughs> I thought it was some bull when we first started, because I didn't want to do that, because I don't do exercise every day. I don't exercise, period. In a youth build program, young people sign up full time for about a year, and they spend half their time going to a youth build alternative school where they study for their high school diploma or their GED. I will sleep. No, no. I am sleeping. On the I knew how to read, but I didn't know how to read well. And my class wasn't laughing at me or nothing. If I was in regular school, they would have laughed at me. They ain't laugh at me or nothing. Like, they helped me out, like, when I got a word wrong. And now I know how to read, and it's a miracle. <laughs> so that's, I, I mean, I love you, Phil. The other half of their time, they spend building housing for homeless and low-income people. It's all knit together with a community of people caring about each other, where they can see a path to a future where they can make a difference. The first school you want to be in your easy school. What we're really trying to get young people to understand is that it's a series of small victories. Getting through orientation, making it into the program, getting your uniform, earning your tool belt. It's a victory, something that you set out to do and you accomplish it, one at a time. When they start to experience those small victories, you begin to see them, begin to believe in themselves. Well, I built my first wall, I was happy. I'm looking at this wall like, oh, I did this. <laughs> I felt like I built like a mansion, like, oh my, I did this? I thought it was gonna be hard at first, like, we is not gonna build this wall. So I felt good. I felt like, you know, this is good that we learn and we doing something else positive, cause you know, not only is we just building houses, it's for other people, low income people. It's 
Since we got public funding in 1994, 76,000 young people have produced 17,000 units of housing in 226 of America's poorest communities. To be able to have our own home, to provide a home for our kids, it's a blessing. It's the first day that I actually own something. My husband and I have something. You guys down here, youth builders, you guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. It's really about rebuilding lives and rebuilding communities. Well, part of what we do with houses is the same thing we try to do with, with uh, young people's lives. The essence of why Youth Build works is the combination of the power of love with the power of opportunity. Young people feel somebody cares about them, and they see opportunity to make something of themselves. Together, that works miracles. I want to be a cook. I want to build my own restaurant. Hopefully, I'll, I'll own my own business. I could see myself being a social worker, because that's what I'm going after. I want to be a social worker, meaning teaching kids and helping parents that need help. We're trying to prepare leaders. We're trying to prepare young people who will forever feel responsible and take responsibility for their themselves, for their communities, for the world. If society would make the investment needed to open the doors to Youth Build and programs like Youth Build to every young person who is knocking, we could end poverty in a generation. I know that I'm going to make it out of here. You will see me graduating in October. You will see, I can see, you see us.